Hi, today we're looking at photographing great crested grebes and displaying great crested grebes in particular. Now go onto YouTube and search for great crested grebes displaying and you'll find some good stuff but you won't find masses of it. It's not been overly filmed or photographed and that's surprising really because it's a very common widespread bird it's a very attractive species and the display is one of the most spectacular in the birding world so you'd think there'd be lots of people filming it and the fact there isn't suggests that it's really quite a difficult subject to do it's certainly something i haven't done as well as i'd like to i'm going to show you some stills pictures i've taken over the years and a little bit of video footage i've taken in more recent times any tips that I have for photographing great crested grebes displaying? Well, the first one is one I've repeated many times on my YouTube channel. If you want to photograph wildlife, don't go into the countryside, head into the cities. That's where wildlife is tame and approachable. And great crested grebes are found in many city parks. And the advantage of a city park is the birds become habituated to people, but also many of the lakes in city parks are not huge. This lake behind me is massive and there's been eight great crested grebes displaying in the middle of it but that's a long way off to try and photograph, way outside the reach of most camera lenses. But there is a disadvantage to having a small lake. You actually want a lake that's big enough to have more than one pair of great crested grebes because when there's other birds around they will display a lot more than if there's just one pair and you'll, you'll see them interacting with, with each other, they're swimming to each other's territory, there's a lot of chasing, a lot of fighting, and whenever this happens and the pair gets back together, they start to display. Just taking simple pictures of great crested grebes, that's simple enough in our city parks because they come very close to the edge. And in fact, even on this large lake here, they come into this little bay because this is where the small fish are. This is where they're going to be able to catch things, not right out in the middle. So quite frequently they do come swimming in here and I can take stills pictures. That's easy enough. It's the display that's difficult. And when I'm talking about the display, I'm not just talking about the head shaking. When you get two grebes swim together, they shake their heads at each other. Well, that's the start of the display, but it's not the real spectacular display that I find actually quite rare. I don't see it all that often. And when I do see it, it's normally at a great distance. So there are many city parks where it's easy to get pictures of grebes coming close enough to photographers. Look at the rear legs, the way they're right at the end of the body, not underneath the body at all. This bird was coming into the bay on the big lake that I was standing in front of and fishing in slow motion. Hopefully it comes up with a fish. And then I'll just show you a handful of stills pictures and what they have in common is they are all taken in city parks, either in the city of Birmingham or London. No hide just standing on the edge of the lake and none of them are cropped either. It's very rare that I crop my pictures. That may change if I get one of these cameras like the Sony A1 or the Canon R5 that has these huge files. Headshots even, they come close enough for those. Now let's go back to the head shaking. This is just two birds who have been separated for a few minutes and when they come back together they greet each other. Notice the feathers on the side of the head are not extended, they are flat. Now in this picture they are extended, you've got these facial discs sticking out. And if you see this, this is the time to start getting excited. Now when they extend the facial discs, the display goes on much longer than when they do that simple head shaking. And this is something they do just before the reed dance. So now you have to make a decision. If the birds are directly in front of you, you can just stay here, you're as close as you're going to get. 
Chances are, however, they've moved. They've drifted to the left or to the right of you. They start to do this display with the facial discs extended. It's going to go on for longer. It could be 30 seconds, 40, even a minute. So you've got time to run along the bank and get closer. And they're used to people here, walking, joggers, cyclists, all sorts of things. You're not going to disturb them. You've got to make that decision. Is it worth running up there to get closer? Well, this is a pretty rare event in my experience, so it's definitely worth the while. I'm going to run up there, get a little bit closer. I need that. So, I'm a little out of breath, but by running 20 metres up the bank, I'm five metres closer to the action. And come on, be fair, that wasn't bad. For an 89-year-old who's had a hard life, that was pretty good. The stall, by the way, is not really for comfort. It's important I'm in the right position because when you're shooting with a telephoto lens video, you get a lot of vibration. And as soon as I touch this handle, I'm like, likely to get vibration, even though it's a very good satchel fluid head. But if I'm in the right position, it's easier to be able to grab the handle and gently move it. It's very important that the facial discs remain extended until the birds separate. If they fold them before they separate, they won't do the weed dance. But here they separate, they immediately dive under the water and both of them come up with some weed, hopefully. Which reminds me, it's my wedding anniversary tomorrow. I must buy my wife some flowers. In fact, the bird on the right dropped its leaves before they met up. Now this is just the head shaking, notice the facial discs are not extended so they won't do the reed dance and here they've got the facial discs extended but before they separate they fold them. So that's the, the end of the display, you're not going to see them dive under for some reeds. It's a very noticeable difference and well worth looking out for because you know it's going to happen. I'll show you my favourite set of stills pictures of the reed dance. One of the problems in the Midlands is when they do dive down for vegetation they usually come up with brown leaves. It would be better if it was a nice bright green bit of water reed which happens on other lakes. And occasionally of course they come up with litter. But that's something I would actually like to photograph again today on a digital camera. It could be a very successful picture if the two grebes came together with litter in the bills. Perhaps better still, one of them comes in with litter and the other comes in with a condom. That would be both a shocking but also a humorous picture and it would be a very good commercial picture, I'm sure it would sell well, but it also could do quite well in these major competitions in the section about the environment. While I was filming the display, this pair of grebes had started to build a nest just to the right of where the heron has landed. Now the heron would definitely be a threat to that nest. If the grebes got youngsters then the heron would certainly attempt to eat them. The youngsters don't stay on the nest very long but it would be a threat to them. And you can see the grebes were very upset about the heron's presence. But the heron was only there to collect a bit of nest material. It's just got to choose the right piece. And 
I guess that wasn't it. Something more substantial. Danger's gone. Now we can get down to a bit of mating. The female has climbed up onto the nest. Sometimes they use a, a mating platform. So they build several platforms which they can just mate on and then one eventually becomes the nest. The male is always very hesitant but when he mounts her he comes up from the rear. What always makes me laugh is when they dismount they always go over the female's head. So it goes forwards. And now I'll show you a sequence of stills pictures on a nest which has just hatched the youngsters. And this was very fortunate. It's in the same location as that previous sequence with the heron, but much closer to the near shore and right next door to a fishing platform. So I could lie down on the wooden platform, again didn't need a hide, they're so used to people, and get nice pictures of them very, very close up. Here are the young are on the parent's back, which is a very common sight. And thanks for watching.